Hello everyone. Welcome to this video tutorial on ER diagram in DBMS by Simply Learn. In this session, we will learn about ER diagram. Starting with what is an ER diagram and why it's been so much used by the companies. Then we will learn about the symbols used in the ER diagram and get familiar with the components of it. So hey everyone, I'm Abhisar Ahuja from Simply Learn and welcome to this video on ER diagram in DBMS. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Let's start. Have you ever wondered how these big e-commerce companies manage their tons of data that keeps updating every second? And these data sets keep on updating in their databases. To perform operations on this data, they should have a conceptual understanding of these databases. And this is done by understanding ER diagrams of the databases. So let's understand what an ER diagram is. An entity relationship diagram describes the relationship of entities that needs to be stored in a database. ER diagram is mainly a structural design for the database. It is a framework made using specialized symbols to define the relationship between entities. ER diagrams are created based on the three main components, entities, attributes, and relationships. Let's understand the use of ER diagram with the help of a real world example. Here, a school needs all its student records to be stored digitally. So they approach an IT company to do so. A person from the company will meet the school authorities, note all their requirements, describe them in the form of ER diagram and get it cross-checked by the school authorities. As the school authorities approve the ER diagram, the database engineers would carry further implementation. Let's have a view of an ER diagram. The following diagram showcases two entities, student and course, and the relationship. The relationship described between student and course is many to many, as a course can be opted by several students and a student can opt for more than one course. Here, student is the entity and it possesses the attributes that is student ID, student name, and student age. And the course entity has attributes such as course ID and course name. Now we have an understanding of ER diagram. Let us see why it has been so popular. The logical structure of the database provided by ER diagram communicates the landscape of business to different teams in the company, which is eventually needed to support the business. ER diagram is a GUI representation of the logical structure of a database which gives a better understanding of the information to be stored in a database. Database designers can use ER diagrams as a blueprint which reduces complexity and helps them save time to build databases quickly. ER diagrams help you identify the entities that exist in a system and the relationships between those entities. After knowing its uses, now we should get familiar with the symbols used in ER diagram. The rectangle symbol represents the entities Oval symbol represents attributes, a rectangle embedded in a rectangle represents a weak entity, a dashed oval represents a derived attribute, a diamond symbol represents a relationship among entities, double oval symbol represents multi-valued attributes. Now we should dive in and learn about the components of ER diagram. There are three main components of ER diagram, entity, attribute and relationship. Entities have weak entity. Attributes are further classified into key attribute, composite attribute, multi-valued attribute, and derived attribute. Relationships are also classified into one-to-one -one relationships, one-to-many relationships, many-to-one relationships, and many-to-many -many relationships. Let's understand these components of ER diagram. Starting with entities. An entity can be either a living or a non-living component. An entity is showcased as a rectangle in an ER diagram. Let's understand this with the help of an ER diagram. Here, both student and course are in rectangular shape and are called entities, and they represent their relationship study in a diamond shape. Let's transition to weak entity. An entity that makes reliance over another entity is called a weak entity. The weak entity is showcased as a double rectangle in ER diagram. In the example below, the school is a strong entity because it has a primary key attribute school number. Unlike the school, the classroom is a weak entity because it does not have any primary key. 
and the room number attribute here acts only as a discriminator and not a primary key. Now let us know about attributes. Attribute An attribute exhibits the properties of an entity. An attribute is illustrated with an oval shape in an ER diagram. In the example below, student is an entity and the properties of student such as address, age, name and roll number are called its attributes. Let's see our first classification under attribute, that is key attribute. The key attribute uniquely identifies an entity from an entity set. The text of a key attribute is underlined. In the example below, we have a student entity and it has attributes, name, address, roll number and age. But here, roll number can uniquely identify a student from a set of students. That's why it is termed as a key attribute. Now, we will see composite attribute. An attribute that is composed of several other attributes is known as a composite attribute. An oval showcases the composite attribute and the composite attribute oval is further connected with other ovals. In the example below, we can see an attribute name which can have further subparts such as first name, middle name and last name. These attributes with further classification is known as composite attribute. Now let's have a look at multivalued attribute. An attribute that can possess more than one value are called multivalued attributes. These are represented as double oval shape. In the example below, the student entity has attributes phone number, roll number, name and age. Out of these attributes, phone number can have more than one entry and the attribute with more than one value is called multivalued attribute. Let's see derived attribute. An attribute that can be derived from other attributes of the entity is known as a derived attribute. In the ER diagram, the derived attribute is represented by dashed oval. And in the example below, student entity has both date of birth and age as attributes. Here, age is a derived attribute as it can be derived by subtracting current date from the student date of birth. Now, after knowing attributes, let's understand relationship in ER diagram. A relationship is showcased by the diamond shape in the ER diagram. It depicts the relationship between two entities. In the below example, student, study, course. Here, both student and course are entities and study is the relationship between them. Now, let's go through the type of relationship. First is one-to-one -one relationship. When a single element of an entity is associated with a single element of another entity, this is called one-to-one -one relationship. In the example below, we have student and identification card as entities. We can see a student has only one identification card and an identification card is given to one student. It represents a one-to-one -one relationship. Let's see the second one, one-to-many relationship. When a single element of an entity is associated with more than one element of another entity is called one-to-many relationship. In the below example, a customer can place many orders, but a particular order cannot be placed by many customers. Now, we will have a look at many-to-one relationship. When more than one element of an entity is related to a single element of another entity, it is called many-to-one relationship. For example, Students have to opt for a single course, but a course can be opted by a number of students. Let's see many-to-many -many relationship. When more than one element of an entity is associated with more than one element of another entity is called many-to-many -many relationship. For example, an employee can be assigned to many projects and many employees can be assigned to a particular project. Now, after having an understanding of ER diagram, let us know the points to keep in mind while creating the ER diagram. First, identify all the entities in the system, embed all the entities in a rectangular shape and label them appropriately. This could be a customer, a manager, an order, an invoice, a schedule, etc. Identify relationships between entities and connect them using a diamond in the middle illustrating the relationship. Do not connect relationships. Connect attributes with entities and label them appropriately, and the attributes should be in oval shape. Assure that each entity only appears a single time, and eradicate any redundant entities or relationships in the ER diagram.
Make sure your ER diagram supports all the data provided to design the database. Make effective use of colors to highlight key areas in your diagrams. With that, we have come to the end of this session. I hope it was exciting and informative. If you liked it, please let us know in the comment section. Also, do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.